Hell yeah, folks, it is Diecast Buffet here again, and today we have a blast for the past. It is, well, from a time where Jeff Gordon actually drove a Ford. Yeah, back in the NASCAR Bush series in the early 90s, he drove a Ford Thunderbird. And today we have his 1991 Ford Thunderbird. I think it's a Carolina Ford. And uh, we're going to go ahead and open it up. Check out the, the, the card back here before we actually hop into this. I mean, it's actually, it's got some damage. You got uh, some scuffs here. You got a, a, a dog bite or something there. And there's all kinds of funk underneath it. So I have no idea uh, what happened to this car, but I bought it. I'm going to be opening it up. No biggie. Uh, and uh, let's go ahead and hop into the review. All righty, folks. Right out of the good old box. And let's check out today's die cast review. So this is a 1990 or 1991 uh, style Ford Thunderbird. Officially, the car's from 1991, but sometimes the you know the die-cast mold styling carries over from the year prior. Now, originally, this car was made in 1997. This is part of a Jeff Gordon Classics line. It was already about four to five years of his tenure in the NASCAR Winston Cup Series, so he already built up a pretty popular uh, brand by then. So it was kind of cool to see him go back and time and start making some of this stuff but what's so remarkable about this car being manufactured in 97 is the quality of the clear coat this thing has been sealed since then and you can just feel how new the clear coat is on this car very very good job in terms of craftsmanship there so let's go ahead and dive into this die cast review of course it's brought to you by our good friends at circuit die cast for all your die cast shopping needs make sure to head over there and use promo code die cast buffet next time at checkout you could save on shipping it's a discount code helps you save orders thirty dollars or more the heck they might even have some of these vintage winter circle cars over there i've seen them a time or two they usually don't last like people buy them quick so if they have any uh, and they're you know on the low hey pick them up why not so you got carolina ford dealers uh, i i don't know who drove this car before or who drove this car after because it went to baby roof in 1992 but i remember dale jarrett i think had a, a a carolina ford dealers paint scheme at one point which is just asinine to think that jeff gordon was at one point a ford driver and you know what's even crazier is dale earnhardt won a championship for the ford camp in the nascar winston cup series so both Gordon and Earnhardt were both Ford drivers at some point in their NAS uh, NASCAR top series, uh, you know, top two, top three series career. You got Thunderbird right there in the front end. No front contingencies, pretty bare bones. I'm not really sure how accurate that is. The mold, I will say, is a little clunky. Um, it, it definitely not my uh, cup of tea in terms of, you know, the clunkiness of it. A little bit too bulky. For my liking, like the the Jeff, not Jeff Gordon, but Mark Martin's, I think it's 1991 or 1993 Darlington win. The front end is so much more more realistic and smooth. I don't know if there's a difference between the 91 Tor uh, Thunderbird to the 92 or 93, because this same mold was used for 1992, uh, uh, you know, the Jeff Gordon baby roof car. Anyways, I don't know which one of those is more accurate to their current year in real life, but I would definitely prefer probably using the 93 mold, maybe? I don't know. Uh, the, the 90s and 80s die cast is really like a Wild West in terms of die cast mold because they had so many different manufacturers and so many different styles of tooling. Uh, it's really fascinating. And the wheels on this look almost exactly to the, to the early 2000s style wheels. Uh, which is kind of weird. You have a bulky mold, but <laughs> the same wheels that they used like it up to 2005. Uh, it's pretty cool. You got the number one right there, Carolina Ford Dealers. I do wish they could have found a way to get the decal over the window. Uh, that's something I don't think I've ever seen them do on a 164 scale. Like, uh, Kev uh, not Kevin, but uh, Ricky Craven's Tide Car. If you notice the Tide logo on the on the real pictures of the car, it actually comes up a little bit on the side window. And throughout NASCAR history, they've actually allowed that on a lot of uh, paint schemes. Uh, just a little bit of the lettering to go over the window because it's not hurting anything. It's not an advantage. It's just, you know, getting the brand. Anyways, uh, I've never seen it made on a die cast that is not custom. So I wish they could have found a way to do that. You got VP Racing. You got Ford Dealers, number one. Bush, that is actually, that's a blast right there. A Bush decal, and it's not on a base. That is fascinating. Uh, but they can't put a, a, a Winston decal. Uh, I got Gatorade, Prestone, Simpson, Pearls, Auto Light, Uni, Unocal, something like that, 76, Union 76, something like that. Goodies, 
ARP something else, something else. Goodyear. Jeff Gordon. <laughs> Ford. Uh, whatever the Biff decal that is, go to the back end of the car. Carolina Ford dealers. Now, there's no taillight logos here, and there's no headlight logos, but that was actually accurate for a lot of paint schemes back in the uh, in the 90s. I think it was around the mid to late 90s is when they actually started putting uh, headlight decals in all the cars. I could be a little fuzzy on that. But yeah, there was a time and place in NASCAR where that wasn't uh, required. You, could, you, know, you just had your standard you know, full paint job look. And go to the right side of the car. It, if I was, you know, really wanting to be nitpicky about this car, I absolutely would add some more contingencies to kind of fill it up a little bit because it does look a little bit bare bones. Uh, but, you know, it is cool that they at least made this. And again, it was manufactured in 1997, but it's based on a uh, 2000, not 2000, a jabroni, <laughs> uh, a 91 Ford Taurus, a Taurus Thunderbird. I am, I'm all over the, the place here. I noticed it does not have a side window either. That is kind of fascinating. Let's go to the top of the car. Now, this bugs me. The, the, the number is not centered on the roof. A lot of people probably don't care about that, but that, that irks me. That really irks me. It's like... <laughs> and then there's nothing on the deck lid, which I have a, I, I have to imagine there was got to be some type of logo that was on the deck lid. But, yeah, the, the, the 90s molds are so... They're so wacky. That's why I did a video piece on it. If you if you want to check it out, uh, I, I, it's called a uh, Horrors of the 1990s Diecast or NASCAR Diecast of the 90s, something like that. Anyways, I did a video piece on it, and I talked about how the diecast molds were so quirky in those years. How you would get like a 97 Pontiac from Winter Circle looked as, as bulky as like the Michelin Man, but then a 98 Pontiac Grand Prix was the best tooling ever made for the 98 or 98 to 2002 Pontiac Grand Prix. It, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, it was a wild west. You had so many different manufacturers and uh, some of them were more realistic than others. And in my honest opinion, this one's probably more clunky. So, if you're using it as a custom, maybe for like a plate car or something cuz you know, it's got a, you know, a taller front end and not as uh, so much, you know, cylinder bullet shape as a lot of the speedway cars would eventually get uh you know the aero wars were always on in nascar since the the daytona superbirds but it didn't really pick up a, a buttload till the early 2000s when they were really skewing the front ends out uh, but anyways thank you all for watching have a blessed one everybody and uh i'll check out the card real quickly because you can't see it until you open it uh, so maybe if you're curious what this looks like at the jeff gordon signature there lifetime series that was kind of their um the, the, the promotion, it's like a wave, if you will. They didn't get all shipped together, I don't imagine. Or well, maybe they did. But, uh, you know, Dale Earnhardt had one. It had a bunch of his vintage cars, but the 91 Carolina Ford Thunderbird. It's so weird to see Jeff Gordon with, like, Kellogg's and Pepsi and all this Hendrick stuff. But it's a freaking Ford. It's funny. Go to the back end of it. And this is back when, like, NASCAR fans were really, like... They were really tribal about their manufacture. Like, you know, if you were a, if you were a diehard Mark Martin guy, you were Blue Oval, you know? And uh, <laughs> if you were a big bow tie guy, you were a diehard bow tie. It just, it was such a different era, brother. But yeah, you could uh, pause that there if you'd like to check it out, all the, uh, you know, the details to it. I would say, though, even though the package is, like, pretty warped, the card back here is actually pretty well. And the, even the ink, like the white ink here, it does not look yellowed. So I got to give them a lot of credit. There's a lot of quality in it. And what's funny with like packaging and stuff for like collectibles, you don't really know how well it's made until decades pass. You know, like in the 2040s or 2050s, we're going to realize or know at least how well the NASCAR Authentics line uh, was manufactured by Lionel because we'll know if the, the crap ages like milk or is it stand the test of time and considering this was manufactured holy cow 25 years ago 26 years ago something like that pretty good job considering how worn this package was this was probably stored in a, a attic or a storage tote for a long time a lot of damage pretty impressed but yeah, there's the, the 97 joint where you can see where it was, you know, officially manufactured. It technically could have been made in late 1996 because this is back when all the new diecasts got made. Like, oh, off the camera, sorry guys. 
This is back when they would make crap well before Speed Weeks. And back in 1997, the Daytona 500, I believe, was actually like the first couple days of February or right at the end of January. So I would not be surprised one bit. This was manufactured maybe November or October of 1996. So it could even be older um, than we uh, originally anticipated. That's all for now, guys. Have a blessed one, everybody. Die Cast Buffet, signing off.